Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A day of tears and questions as word spreads of the passing of River Rouge Police Chief Deborah Hayes Price. People complain about road construction, sure, but by Friday morning, we could be all learning how much worse things could be if the work stops. And for live radar showing trouble brewing when it comes to rain and storms around Metro Detroit. And the weather tops our news here at 6. It could turn severe this evening. Headed right for us. Let's check in with Ben for what's coming up. Guys, yeah, we have had some sprinkles out there so far, but now we're starting to see a few of the thunderstorms, especially down in our south zone. These are hugging the western county line in Lenawee County. Some lightning strikes out there and definitely a couple downpours, but these are not severe. We're really looking for that severe window to start opening at about 11 p.m. tonight, going through the early part of the overnight. Back here to the western part of the state, you can see one of the rain bands. It's just a little bit more put together south of cold water, but some of the areas where we're seeing the highest instability right now uh, from our west zone back to Grand Rapids. So we'll be watching this area for intensification, especially out here uh, towards Howell and Ann Arbor in the western part of our west zone. Tonight, lightning and wind, definitely some storm threats, but the tornado threat, even though it's low, is not zero. We're going to keep our eyes on the possibility of an isolated weak tornado tonight, and we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Don't forget to download our local, for our local forecasters app. It puts interactive radar, severe weather alerts, and a lot more in the palm of your hand. Download it for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Kim? It's construction season, and we're used to seeing this sign, signs like this one, near big projects like I-696 and the Rouge Bridge. But soon, it could be halted, and we could be seeing signs like this. That's if people who run the heavy equipment can't come to terms on a new labor agreement. Lots of questions about what's happening here for some local answers. We turn to local for business editor Rod Maloney. Rod, good evening. Good evening, Kimberly. We just get moved away from I-696, but you know what it looks like. They're digging up part of it. There is some cement down in the uh, in the Roseville section. Uh, but unless something happens soon, there is no reason to believe that it is, by the way, that it will, by the way. There is the distinct possibility the stretch of highway that's just behind me here is going to turn into a ghost town. And we're not even sure how. For decades, the operating engineers negotiated five-year contracts with a group of construction company owners represented by the Michigan Infrastructure Transportation Association. Tonight, it's looking like the operating engineers, represented by Local 324, have decided the group bargaining just isn't working for them anymore. Mike Nystrom is MIDA's vice president. It comes as a surprise, and we're, we're pretty baffled by the union's decision not to sit down with the group. We've done this for over 50 years with this union and, and several others. The union isn't talking on camera and would only send local for the statement quote. Our constant goal is to reach agreements with contractors that are mutually beneficial and keep our membership working, fairly compensated and safe. That is what our focus is and will remain on, representing our members to the best of our abilities and continuing the work we've undertaken for over 100 years. Now that doesn't tell us much, but without a contract which expires Thursday at midnight, Nystrom says major sites across the state like this one of the Rouge River will go silent. So there will be a process that takes place to put these projects in a, into a manner that uh, uh, safe for the driving public to pass through or safe in a neighborhood uh, for the local folks to be around that project while it's shut down. Lots and lots of questions like, will we see a strike? We don't know. Will we see a lockout? We don't know. Both sides are saying they want to keep working. The question is, how do they keep that going? Right now, the company owners say that they've offered a contract and they've not heard back. And the unions say they want to change the established pattern of bargaining by individual negotiations with each company. And there are well over 100 of those, and that could take a very long time. So this is a, a lot of work to do in a very short amount of time by Friday morning. Back to you. Uh, well, Rod, you just mentioned a contract offer. Um, have you been able to find out what the owners have put on the table here? Right. Um, it's a, in a five year deal. They're saying two dollars an hour more for each of the first three years of the contract and a dollar an hour more in the last two years of the contract. But the unions are saying that's nice, the wages, but there are other issues, other benefits that they want to see in the contracts. And they say this is high, just in a you know, it isn't going to fly. They're not going to take it. And so we're just going to have to wait and see. The union yeah. says they will not say a word about this until Friday morning. All right. Certainly more to come. And we know you'll keep us posted, Rod. Thanks. 
People in River Rouge are mourning the loss of their police chief today. 66 year old Deborah Hayes Price died unexpectedly after serving as the city's top cop for the past three years. Local force Coco McAvoy has a look at the chief's impact on the community there. Chief Deborah Hayes Price was a strong leader in the River Rouge community. It's uplifting to me that I could serve in this capacity. Balloons are now set up outside of the police department after Chief Price passed away unexpectedly. Police aren't yet releasing her cause of death nor when and where she died. But the news has spread to the community. Finding out that she passed away was a shock and a big surprise to everybody. Brandy Coleman works at City Hall Coney Island across the street from the department and became well acquainted with the chief. She was a good woman. She was always there for the community, always there for whoever needed help. Coleman said she talked to Price regularly in the restaurant. She was one of the pillars of the community that made it what it is and was going to be. Now, Coleman, the police department, and the entire community is mourning the loss of Chief Deborah Hayes Price. She's going to be missed by everybody. And the chief's family is asking for privacy at this time, but the River Rouge Police Department did release a statement that reads, quote, in part, this is a tragic loss for all of us, but most particularly for her family and our thoughts and prayers go out to them. The chief will be missed, but she will always be remembered. She made the city of River Rouge a better place and community members echoed that statement. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Yeah, very professional and caring when I cross paths with her. Certainly going to be missed down there. All right, Coco, thanks. A man has been charged in connection with setting a mobile home on fire with six people inside. Stephen Zawanda was arraigned on 20 charges, included attempted murder, assault, and arson. It happened last week at a mobile home on Old Michigan Avenue in Canton. Wayne County prosecutors say Zawanda set fire to the home while six people slept, including three children. Everyone got out okay. Zawanda is currently being held without bond. New tonight, Michigan Governor Rick Snyder is speaking out about Nestle's water deal. The Swiss based company taking millions of gallons of water from wells in northern Michigan that's eventually bottled and sold for profit, yet the company only pays the state 200 bucks a year. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester with more on the bubbling controversy. Hank. Who better to ask about the controversial Nestle deal than Governor Rick Snyder? After all, he was a businessman for years. But as you'll see, it's hard to figure out exactly what the governor thinks about this deal. Nestle is making big money off of the state of Michigan, pumping water out of the state and selling it everywhere. The DEQ granting the permit, saying Nestle is just following the rules laid out in a statute. But is it a good investment for Michigan or just a chance for a foreign-based company to make a big profit? Our Devin Skillian asked Governor Snyder about the deal on Mackinac today. Is it a fair deal for Michigan? Well, again, it followed all the current regulatory and, and legal environment. The question is, people can always say, should the system change in some way? That's a fair policy question that people could ask. But in terms of complying with the current rules and not hurting the aquifer and making sure we continue to have water for other uses, uh, it, it's in compliance with that. Some lawmakers have proposed changing the laws or introducing new legislation that would tax Nestle. Would you like to see changes in the law, even if they're adhering to what current policy Well, is? again, I, I think we can learn from this and look at these kind of questions. Do I have a policy suggestion at this point in time? No. But some lawmakers have suggestions, saying that the deal needs to be stopped and that the governor, who appoints the head of the DEQ, should be doing more to make a change. You know, I've heard the governor's office say, well, there's nothing they can do because it's in the statute. Then the state legislature says, well, there's nothing they can do because the uh, governor appoints a DEQ. Well, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that is not going to wash here. I mean, if you can change the Constitution of the United States, you can certainly figure out a state statute in Michigan. Some legislation is pending right now, but it is unclear whether Nestle will have to pay the state more money to take the water. But it is a story we will continue to follow. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. And we'll be diving deeper into this issue, talking with our lawmakers and others who oppose Nestle's water deal with the state. If you'd like to see more on this topic, go to the Help Me Hank page on clickondetroit.com. 
Wayne State University is trying to entice former students who left without a degree to come back and complete their education. Today, they announced a program to forgive up to $1,500 in debt. But that debt can only be forgiven if students re-enroll and finish their degrees. The initiative is called the Warrior Way Back Program. The program will launch as a pilot program in its first year, accepting about 100 people. Head to click on Detroit.com for information on how you can apply. All right, let's get a look at what's on tap for NBC Nightly News immediately following this broadcast. Savannah Guthrie is live in New York City tonight with a preview. Hi, Savannah. Hi, Jason. Hi, Kim. Good to see you both. And ahead for us tonight, detecting colon cancer by the American Cancer Society is now urging you to get screened even earlier. And wings in a prayer, the televangelist sparking an uproar by asking followers to buy him a private jet when we see you in just a few. Yep, that'll be in about 20 minutes. We'll see you then, Savannah. Thanks. Still to come, you know what they say about leg day at the gym. Don't skip it, right? Why your heart may thank you for that ahead in good health. And Ben, we've got a new weather warning. Yeah, Kim, a severe thunderstorm warning now in effect for Lenawee County until 7 o'clock tonight. It's not the storms that we're rolling through, but it's that line that is just now starting to enter the southern part of the county that we're concerned about. 60 mile an hour wind gusts a possibility. We'll keep monitoring if you're on local. Plus, one of the oldest tricks in the book, how this guy got away with a bunch of cash from the register at a local family business. Stay with us.